Want to make a quilt in a day? Let's do it together. Hi, it's Fran Morgan with Fabric Cafe. And today we're gonna be sewing. We are gonna be making the affinity pattern from the Make It Easy with Three Yard Quilts. Now we've got our gorgeous fabrics pulled in these bold, bright colors. We've got our pattern, our tools ready, but before we start using these things, let's go check out what we're gonna make. All right, we have our affinity pattern here and I'm super excited to make it. And let me just tell you some of the neat things about this quilt. The first thing is, is we have this great block right here. Now you see it's a rectangle, but really we just have two strips sewn on each side. This is gonna go together so fast, we're gonna be able to do this in no time at all. But then our alternate block here, it's almost, well, I wouldn't say it's a nine patch because we have this little cute peekaboo little spot right here in the middle of this block with some of our focus fabric. And then we have our cornerstones here on our block. It comes together and makes this great visual path for our eye to travel. But of course, our focus fabric really pops as well as on the border. Now this is gonna stitch up so fast in no time at all and is super easy to do. Before we get started here, I have compiled all of my tools I'm gonna need and I've made a list for you. So if you wanna take a moment, hit pause on your player there and jot down this list. Okay, so the first thing that we do when we make a pattern is we actually go through the pattern and read it. So in the very beginning, we do have a note here and it explains that our fabric selection guide is on the second page. So if you have any trouble with your fabric selection, that's gonna help you. Then also it explains the WOF, which is an abbreviation for width of fabric. Now width of fabric is distance between one selvage of your fabric and the opposite selvage of your fabric. And that is how we're gonna be cutting. Most fabric comes off the bolt folded and the selvages are matched. So that's basically what that means is you're cutting with the fabric, selvage to selvage. The second part of our pattern here is the cutting instructions. We put all of the cuts for fabric number one together, all of the cuts for fabric number two, and all of the cuts for fabric number three. Now I like to make labels for all of the cuts and the reason why I do that is because often cuts are the same size but they're used in different places. So let's look at fabric number one. Got my Sharpie here, got my note card, and I'm gonna put a little um, note at the top that this is for fabric one so that whenever I start putting it in bags with the cuts, I know that that's what this is. And then as I read this, you see this strip is going to be for the strip assembly A. Now, if you notice in the cutting instructions, strip assembly A is bold. Anytime we bold something in the cutting instructions or in the instructions themselves, that means that there is a diagram. So you can look over here and you can see that we have a strip assembly A diagram, which is great. So that kind of puts it together in your head and you can kind of see where you're going. So let's go ahead and make this label. We've got fabric one, and then we have strip assembly A. Okay, so I'm gonna set that aside, and then I'm gonna go to my second cutting instruction for fabric number one. Once again, I'm gonna put that this is for fabric number one. That way when I'm cutting, I know that this is fabric number one label. The next thing I'm gonna cut is block B assembly. So I'm gonna write on here a block B assembly. Now something else that may be really helpful for you to know is that we list the cutting instructions in order of use. So the first thing you're gonna be doing in the instructions and sewing is your strip assembly. You won't be making your block B assembly until afterwards, so it's second in the list. And then we're gonna continue and go down. So I'm gonna keep making my cards and my instructions, and then once I'm done, I'll get back and we will start cutting these strips. So I am going to smooth out my fabric, get it as straight as I can on my cutting mat. And I'm gonna use my 24 inch long ruler for this. Now this is a six and a half by 24. And the reason why I always like to use a 24 inch long ruler to cut strips is because it reaches all the way across so that I don't have to shift my ruler when I'm cutting. What I like to do when I first start working with the fabric is instead of trying to square that edge up, I cut my strip bigger and then I'll square it up. So let me show you how I do that. So the first thing I'm gonna do is place it up here, take that safety off, which I always like to leave on. It's a good habit. And then I'm gonna take my strip and I am going to turn it around. 
I'm going to double check my measurement and I'm going to line up the line of my ruler with the strip so that I'm sure to get it the right size. Now I'm going to trim off just this little bit. Now basically what I'm doing is squaring this up and making sure that's even. I only do that on the first strip I cut from my yard. So this would be trash. And from this strip, I'm going to cut a piece. I'm going to line this up and I'm going to just trim this. Okay, so that's the first cut that I need. And here is my label. So I'm going to get a bag and I'm going to tuck this in so that I know exactly what this piece is. So whenever I start sewing, I know exactly that I'm grabbing the right thing. And it looks like I have another width of fabric strip, but it's a little bit wider than my 24 inch ruler. So I'm going to grab my square and I'm going to line this up and cut. All right, I'm going to hold that very still. I'm going to shift my ruler very carefully, give it some pressure and cut again. Now from this, let's see, I have one more of those. So I'm going to cut one more of those. Shift, 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 and finish that strip. And my instructions say that I'm going to cut pieces, rectangles, out of these strips. So I'm going to kind of shift this one over so I have plenty of room to work. I'm going to take this one and turn it sideways. Once again, I just want to mention, I'm going to line up a line on the bottom here, and I'm going to leave that selvage extended past the final measurement so that I can turn this and cut that later. All right, let's cut that. Then I am going to turn it, and I am going to lay this out again and trim this. I'm making sure both the lines horizontal horizontally and vertically are lined up on the edge and I'm going to trim that selvage off and that's why I leave that on there and of course there are two here because this is double layered. Let's take these and get our label our block B assembly which is what this is we will get these in the bag and then we will continue cutting all of our pieces. Okay, I've started cutting fabric number two, and I have something special to show you on that. The next step is a partial strip assembly. And I know sometimes that can be a little confusing, so I wanna step you through it. So I'm back to using my long ruler because it's wide enough for the piece. I'm gonna give this a quick cut. And on our partial strip assembly, what we've done is we are gonna be cutting three different pieces from this one strip. And the reason why we do this is because, of course, these are three yard quilts and we try to use every bit of the fabric, which is really great. So in this case, because all of the pieces that we are cutting are not used in the same position, we call it a partial. So for instance, when we were cutting fabric number one, we cut a bunch of rectangles out of the strip, which was great, but it was all used for the same rectangle for the same block A assembly. In this case, we have three pieces that we're gonna cut from this one strip. So we're gonna cut one piece that's gonna be used in the strip assembly B. Then we're gonna cut two pieces that are gonna be used in the block B assembly. So when we have two different purposes like that, we call it a partial. So we have one strip here. So I'm gonna make my first cut. This is for my strip assembly B. And I'm gonna use my ruler here. And so this will be our first piece. So I'm gonna just trim this here. Now, as you know, I like to do, I still have a selvage on this, so I'm gonna trim that off. Okay, so here is the first piece from that strip. Here is the remainder of the strip. Now I'm gonna consult my pattern. I need two pieces for the block B assembly. So what it has me do is to cut some long strips and then cut them to size. So this is my first for the block B assembly and lined this up. I'm lining my ruler up with the edge of that fabric so I can trim it. This is the second piece from the one strip. So this is our partial here. You have to be a little bit of a contortionist sometimes, don't you? 
All right, so this one is my first one. And here is my second piece. From this one strip, I was able to get this piece, which is gonna be a strip assembly B. I was able to get two of these pieces, which is going to be for my block B assembly. So you see how that works for the partial strip assembly. It's very simple. I am gonna place this in the bag with my strip assembly B strips, okay? And then the remaining two pieces here are for block B assembly. I will put that in the bag with the block B assembly. Okay, I'm cutting my fabric number three strips and I'm down to my border number one strips. I've cut all of those and the next step is to cut another border number one strip, but it's gonna be cut into two pieces. So I wanna show you that. So we are actually gonna be cutting a border number one extension and a binding extension. So we're gonna have one larger piece and one smaller piece. So here's my regular border number one strips. We'll set those aside. Now the binding extension is a little bit smaller than the border extension. So I'm gonna cut it first because it's just easier to cut a smaller piece. So I'm gonna open this up, put my ruler on here and cut this piece and then I will turn it around and cut off that selvage. You know how I like to do that. Okay, we'll put that in our trash. Okay, this is our border number one extension. I'm gonna put it with the border number one strips and we'll put these in the bag all together with their label. Now, the binding extension is cut down just a little bit further. So I'm gonna now trim this to the appropriate size as it says in the pattern here and I will put this binding extension with my other binding strips. Now I wanna take just a moment and look at this fabric in more detail because it's gorgeous. I love the colors on this fabric. I think whenever I'm sewing and I use a really bright, happy fabric like this, it just makes the experience so much more fun. And this is just gorgeous. We have our focus with all of these gorgeous greens and reds and blues. And you can see it goes in our rectangle, but I also love the fact that we have just a little square right here, just a little peekaboo of that bright color popping through. Then our number two fabric, lots of movement in this fabric, just gorgeous. It has these big swirls and waves, kind of a feathery look. And of course you see here that it's in our background as our number two. And then our number three, again, wonderful movement, has just a little smidge of orange in it, which I like on this great fuchsia pink. And of course you see it in our alternate block that makes our little stepping stones and frames that peekaboo so perfectly. Now this is our Tropical Paradise kit. Once again, this is our affinity pattern from the Make It Easy with Three Yard Quilt book, and you can find that on fabriccafe.com. Okay, I'm gonna start sewing by my very first step, which is the strip assembly A. So I'm gonna just double check my pattern, and it looks like here that my assembly diagram has a black, a dot, and then a black piece. So this is what I'm looking at. My black is my number three, which is my pink, my dotted piece is my focus fabric, which is the great tropical. So I'm gonna sew the uh, tropical print in between my two number three strips, which are the pink. So we're gonna start doing that. All right, and then I'm gonna take this one and we're gonna line up those edges and we've got it right sides together. And then we will start sewing. Now, I usually don't pin my strip assemblies. I kind of sew them slowly, watching my seam allowance to make sure that I'm keeping a consistent seam allowance and just adjusting it as I go. So it's a very simple. All right, now let's do the other side. So I'm gonna be putting my focus fabric in the middle of this strip assembly. So I'm gonna just take this one, of course, again, right sides together, match those edges, and we are going to start sewing this one. Now, once again, as you notice, I am not pinning, and I'm just going to make sure I'm good and adjust as I go, watching for that consistent seam allowance. Okay, so 
Here we go. We have our number three with our focus in the middle. Now I'm going to run over and go press my seams open and then we'll get back to the next strip assembly. Okay, now I've got my first strip assembly done. So I'm going to start with my B strip assembly. And here we have our black, which is our number three, our white, which is our number two, and our black. Now on this assembly, we're going to make an entire assembly which I've already done one of them, as you can see here. I've got my number three fabric on each side of my number two, but it also calls for a partial. So I have my partial strips here. And of course, remember, that just means that it's not a full with the fabric strip. It's just part of a strip. Now I'm gonna get my number two and my number three to get this started. We're gonna do our right sides together. Now, before I sew this, I wanna point out just a few things on my machine that I use all the time. And it's probably helpful for you to know exactly what I'm using here. So I have a quarter inch foot, which is an extra purchase from my machine dealer, but I use this all the time. And on this foot, there are little notches. The notch all the way on the very back, back here, that notch tells me that that's where my needle is gonna land. Then the notch right in front of it is the notch that tells me I'm exactly a quarter inch from where the needle is gonna land. So the space between these two notches. Now different machines have different looking feet. Most machines do have a quarter inch available. Sometimes they're acrylic acrylic with a little red line. Sometimes they're like mine with these notches. Now something else that I use all the time is I have a quarter inch line on my table here and then I know that this little notch on my presser plate is also quarter inch. So this is what I'm lining up my strips with. So it's very perfect. I have these notches on my foot as well as my line here so that I know that I'm getting a perfect quarter inch. If I ever start doubting that, I'll actually sew a sample and go measure it with a ruler. So that's how I make sure that I stay exactly perfect. All right, let's get this um, partial strip assembly together. I've got my right sides together. I am going to start sewing. I know exactly where my needle's gonna land because I've got that notch and I have my line of my quarter inch here all lined up to get going. And away we go. I have my strip assembly A here on the table ready to cut it into the unit A's. Now, one of the things we do at Fabric Cafe is we try to do strip assemblies as often as we possibly can, simply because it speeds the process up so much. I am gonna line up the lines on my ruler with my seams here. That's one of the things I really like to do, just to make sure that I'm really nice and straight. Now, it looks like I need to trim this one just a smidge, so I'm gonna make the first cut. I'm gonna turn it around and trim it. That second one that I cut should be nice and clean without any trimming necessary. I'm lining up my lines vertically as well as horizontally, and I'm gonna trim that down. All right, now let's, there's one unit A. I'm gonna cut one more just so that you can see. It's nice and straight, looks like I'm all lined up and I don't have to trim that. Now, occasionally as I'm cutting these units like this, sometimes I have to straighten them up just a little bit and I have to trim it again. That's very normal and very easy to do. Okay, I am gonna put these in a bag. What I have done here is I just flipped my card over from the strip assembly A and wrote unit A on the other side. I'll put these in and then I will continue to cut my unit A's. Now, whenever I move on to my strip assembly B, it is done exactly the same way. You're just gonna rinse and repeat. Make sure you check your pattern for measurements, square it up and cut your unit Bs. Okay, I am ready to start my block A assembly. So I'm gonna start my step one of block A and we're going to be using our unit A's that we cut from our strip assembly. And this is gonna make that cute little uh, peekaboo block there. And I'm gonna sew a fabric number three strip to the side. And we're gonna start by sewing it on one side. So I'm gonna take my number three, strip, number three fabric strip here, and I am going to lay my unit right on the edge like this, and we are gonna start sewing. And as you can see here, I haven't cut off my selvages. That's gonna get trimmed off whenever I trim these apart, so it's no problem whatsoever. So once again, I'm watching my seam allowance. And we sew, sew, sew. 
Now what I do is I take my next one that I'm gonna sew and just give a little bit of space between and then I'm just gonna sew the next one on. Now basically I'm sewing all of my unit A's on the number three strip. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do after I had all of these sewn onto my strip, I'm gonna move this over to my iron and I'm gonna press this seam open. And of course, one of our secret tools, which we all know is our Mary Ellen's Best Press. And the reason why we always use that is it keeps our seams nice and crisp and keeps them open, which is just fabulous. We have a nice open seam. The next thing we're gonna do is cut these apart. Now, whenever I trim, I always line up a line of my ruler with a seam. There goes my salvage. I'm gonna trim this one first, and then I'm gonna turn it around and trim the end off the other one. So we've got those apart, and you see here I need to trim this even, and then we're gonna trim that side. Okay, so here is our first step of step one for block A assembly. Now, of course, I'm gonna continue, do that for the whole strip, then we're gonna go sew the other side. Okay, now we are moving on to block A step two. So I've gone ahead and done the first portion of this, and I have sewn the step one pieces onto a strip, trimmed them off, pressed them, trimmed them off, very similar to the process I just did for step one to get to this center portion. Now, one of the things to keep in mind whenever you're making this is you want your unit A that's in the center here, all of these to go vertically. Now it's time to put my sides on. So let me show you how I do that. So this is also the strip assembly and we've cut our units off. We did that earlier. And of course, we're gonna have one on each side. Now I'm gonna go and sew all of one side on first. I find that this helps me because anytime I'm doing a repetitive task the same exact way, I tend to have less errors. So that's one of the things that I prefer to do. I have my seam allowance here and my seam allowance on this one. I'm gonna match those seams up as close as possible. I'm gonna grab me a straight pin and I'm gonna go straight down and I'm gonna check to make sure that I have gone through that seam on the opposite side. Then I'm gonna go ahead and catch that one and put it through the top. So you can see my straight pins right through the seam, right through the seam, and right through the seam on the bottom piece as well. That's how I get those seams to match so perfectly. Okay, I'm gonna do it on the other seam here as well. Now I don't typically put a pin right on these, the in the beginning and in here because this pin is so close and it's fairly lined up for me so I'm ready to go. So let's get this side sewn on and we will get going here. Now I sew right up to the pin. Now remember those notches that I mentioned earlier? This is where they're gonna come really handy. These are the notches on your presser foot. So you're gonna know where your needle's gonna land. So we're really close. So I'm almost there, so I'm gonna pull the pin at this point. Now remember guys, this isn't a race, so go slow, take it easy, and just enjoy the process. And then I'm gonna sew to my next pin. All right, I'm getting close, so I'm watching where my needle lands. And then I'm gonna pull the pin when I get close and then I'm going to finish it off. Now I'm gonna continue this process. I'm gonna do all the pieces on the one side of the block. I'll press them, then I'm gonna go back and do all the pieces on the opposite side, press those, and then we've got a finished block. Now we finished all of our block A's and it's time to make our block B. So on our block B, we have our diagram here that shows us the fabrics that we're using. And of course it's listed in the, the text as well. We have our fabric one rectangle and we have our fabric number two strips. Now this is an interesting situation and let me just kind of point something out. We have our rectangles that we cut and with the strips on the side, you might be thinking, well, why didn't we use a strip assembly to make these blocks? Well, the reason why we didn't do that is so that we could cut these and use the directional fabric in this placement. If we would have done a strip assembly, then we would be turning the fabric and it wouldn't be upside right. So this is a great pattern for directional fabric. 
Okay, so I have my rectangle. We're gonna put the fabric number two strip on each side. And basically I'm gonna follow the same process as before. Because my rectangle's a little bigger, I'm gonna put it on the bottom this time. And then I will just keep my strip going all the way, very similar as I did with my block A assemblies. Okay, we've done all of our trimming and pressing for both of our blocks. All right, so now let's talk about assembling the rows. Normally, whenever I'm sewing at home, I like to put the rows, lay them out so that I see the entire quilt all laid out put together. And that way I'm sure that all my rows are turned the same direction and that they're all in the right place. The only thing that I would do is to watch out for is on our block A, we have this little center piece. I would make sure that all of these are turned to the same way. I would just do that for continuity. If it doesn't happen that way for you, that's okay. If I were laying this out at home, I would go ahead and alternate these just as the pattern says. I would do an, an A, a B, an A, a B, and I'd have these all laid out. Then I would go left to right and I would stack them. I would stack A on top, then B, then A, and then B, so that I know, okay, these first two need to go together just like this, and then the next two have to go together just like that, so it's all together for you. Now, one of the little tricks that I love to do, and I do this every single time, is I just take a sticky note like this, and I take my assembly diagram, and I lay it on the first row and I just have it there so that I can see, oh, here's my blocks, very clear. Now, sometimes whenever I have multiple blocks in a row that I'm doing, I'll use two sticky notes so that I can cover. So for instance, if I'm doing row two, I would cover there, and then I could take another sticky note and lay it on top so that all I'm seeing is the row I'm working on. So we're starting with our A, we have our center going the right direction, and then we have our B. I'm gonna just flip this over. And this is another thing I do. I always hold the side that I'm gonna sew just in case because that's where I'm gonna go. Don't wanna accidentally get that turned. All right, these particular blocks, and I love this about this pattern. There are no seams for me to match here. So I, can, I am not gonna pin because I have no seams to match. I'm gonna put those together and I'm gonna start going. And of course, as always, watching for my quarter inch seam allowance. Perfect. Now, I always wait to press till I have the whole row together. Okay, so then the next two, I'm gonna do exactly the same thing. They're gonna go side by side like this. I'm gonna fold it over and hold the side that I'm gonna sew. I just made a mistake, but I'm gonna share it with you because this is exactly what I was talking about. Do you see how this middle section is going horizontally, and this section is going vertically, it's okay, I'm not gonna pull it out, I'm gonna roll with it. But if, you, if that's important to you, make sure that you lay your rows out right, just like I didn't, but we're gonna keep going. So we have our two blocks on the first part of our row, we're gonna put these together, I'm gonna hold the, the side I need to sew, and we're gonna get this together. Now I'm gonna sew this seam, and then I'm gonna go press this row lay it out and put it in position, and I'm gonna pick up the second row and keep going. Okay, I have all of my rows sewed together. So on the table here, I have my top two rows. Now, I like to sew two rows together at a time. So I'll sew the top two, set them back down, then I'm gonna grab the middle two rows and sew those together, then put them back down, then I'm gonna go get my bottom two rows. Once I have the sets of two sewn together, then I'm gonna sew all of the sets together so that I have all six rows put together. For me, it's a little easier to work with that way so that I'm not handling the entire bulk all the time. So it just kinda helps a little bit. I'm gonna fold this row one over and this will be the edge that I sew. So I'm gonna pin everywhere seams match. That is the most important part for me so that I know that all of this is gonna to come together really nice. We're gonna just go ahead and get all of these seams matching here with our pins. 
Okay, so I have my two rows all pinned together at those seams. Now we're going to sew it all along that edge and line up my foot and my needle and go. Now, once again, I am using the notches on my foot to watch where my needle lands so that I don't accidentally sew over a pin, which, you know, I have done that too, and it's not fun because then I have to stop and change my needle. And I like to just keep sewing. I don't want to have to stop and do that. <laughs> All right. Okay, we've got our rows together. It's our first set of two. I love it. It's great. All right, now I'm going to go press this seam and then I'm going to grab the next two, which are the middle two rows and then the bottom two rows, and then we'll get them all put together just like I did here. So Affinity is such a versatile pattern. I want to show you some other fabric choices that we have and we have some images too. So let's step through some additional fabric. Here I have some beautiful blues. We have this blue that's kind of a floral that also looks a little bit tropical, but it's a blue on blue. And of course it's our focus. It's going to go right here. And then our number two is a nice soft blue. Now this has a lot of depth to it and it's gonna add a lot of dimension to our number two spot, which is where the white is. And then to give it that extra punch that we love to do, we've got a great textural black. That is gonna be our squares going across, across the surface as well as the border and the binding. And that's gonna just bring it all together, give your eye that path to travel. It's gonna be fabulous. So let's check out that image so you can see how good it looks as well. And this is just so gorgeous in blues. I love the way the fabric falls. I love that pop that the black gives it. And that blue floral in the focus part is just amazing. So let's get you the kit information on this. It is called Twilight Blues. And of course, you know it's the affinity pattern from the Make It Easy book. So I have another amazing kit here. And this is kind of a different flavor than what we've done on some of the other kits. I love that we have this great color combination of the yellows, very soft, warm yellows, a little bit of a peach color with a gray background. This is so gorgeous. This is our focus fabric. Of course, it's gonna go everywhere. You see our tropical on this one. And then we have paired it with a really nice clean white. It's almost like you can feel the breeze and the laundry blowing in the wind. It's just gorgeous. Of course, it's gonna go where the white is and our wonderful peach that coordinates so very perfectly with our focus fabric. And it is gonna go everywhere the pink is here in our little stone stepping stones there. So this is absolutely gorgeous. This just makes me think of a spring field and I wanna lay down and roll around in the dandelions. It's so much fun. So you see here that it's just such a soft, different look for this. Of course, the tropicals are gorgeous. We have some others that are gorgeous, but this one just has such a springtime, summery feel. Such a great, great combination of fabric. Now, this kit is called Dandy Trio. And once again, we do have our affinity pattern here from the Make It Easy book. Now I have another great kit here and I love how versatile these patterns are and all these different fabrics just make it so easy to work with and can give you such a different look. So we have this beautiful navy, navy here with some purple florals and believe it or not, we have some great jade frogs in here. So look at this, this is so cute. These frogs are all over these lily pads and it's almost like a pond right here on your quilt. It's really cool. So this is our focus fabric. Of course, it goes everywhere. Our tropical print is here. Then our number two on this is this really fun textural purple. Now that's gonna be our background. This really pops well off of our focus and I really like it because of the depth and dimension. It's almost like, it almost kinda has a water look, but I know it's purple, so it's kind of different, but it really does have a lot of depth, which I like. Now our number three, we're gonna do something a little different on this one. We have this great green and blue bamboo print. I think this is amazing and it kind of acts like a stripe. So and in just a minute, you're going to see the image. This is going to go everywhere. The pink is here and it's going to give so much additional movement to the quilt, which I really love. Just think it comes together great. And you can see how great this looks together. I love that purple background and I love the way the bamboo fabric in the number three position acts like a stripe and gives us all that extra movement. I really love it. Now, don't forget, we have limited quantities on these kits. 
And don't forget also that any three yards works with in any three yard pattern. So that's really, really cool. And to just kind of help with some inspiration, we are going to be showing you some extra images at the end of this video so you can be really, really inspired. Now let's get the kit information for you on this one. It is called Leaping Lily Pads. And once again, it is our affinity pattern from the Make It Easy book. I have my border number one strips laid out here and I do something a little different. I kind of cheat a little bit, but I want to show you and step through exactly how I do this. So we have our border strips and we're going to sew them end to end. So basically what that means is I'm going to put them right sides together. What I do, this is my cheat, okay? What I do is I leave my selvages on, match those selvage lines right here, and then I take my quarter inch foot and I sew a quarter inch from that line. I do that on all the pieces. So you're gonna have one long piece, one long strip. After I sew all the strips together, I then come back and either use my scissors and my rotary cutter and I cut right on this line. So that way it takes that selvage off. Now remember whenever we were cutting and we did a partial border number one, we call that a border number one extension. This is just an additional strip that's not quite as long as the others. You're just gonna include this whenever you're sewing everything end to end. So it's the exact same process. Now we're gonna do this with these strips, then you're gonna continue and do them with your border number two strips and your binding strips, including that extension. Now, as you can see, we've got all of our strips sewn end to end. We've got them sewn to the edges of our quilt and it just goes together so quickly. Now we have another video that goes into more detail about putting the borders on, putting the bindings on and the backing. So be sure and check that out when it pops up here. Now it's the same method regardless of the quilt. So it keeps it very, very simple. Now you also saw how easy this was to go together. We've got these great blocks, even though this is a rectangle here, this is still a square. And then how fun and easy it is to put that little peekaboo in there. So fast, no half square triangles, super quick to do. Well, now that you see how easy it is to put these blocks together, let's see how versatile this quilt is and look at some other fabric images or quilt images so that you can see some different fabrics. So the first one here is really a different one and I really love the focus fabric on this one. It has so much movement, it has such a unique style to it and I think the quilt is very, very warm with that cream background. It is really neat. Now the second one that we have that you're looking at, this one is fun and fresh and airy and once again we just have a springtime look. We have some beautiful blues and pinks together. And doesn't the quilt look so different from all of the other ones? I think it's really cool. All right, now we have a really fun one. You can see how different it looks in a little bit of a traditional red, white, and blue feel. And it's, it's neat too, because what we have on this one is we have a light focus fabric, a little bit darker number two and a darker number three. It has that very traditional Americana feel, which I really, really like. All right, then we have one more that's all fun and festive, I think. We have a pink and white and green and has some bright, bold colors with all of those florals floating in the background. A really fun dot in the background to give it some extra dimension. Really like the way this one is. Now, all of these kits and all the fabric choices here are available on Fabric Cafe, but don't forget, we have limited quantities. So be sure and go check out those kits on our website, fabriccafe.com. Let me know which one is your favorite. What is your style? I would love to hear it. Be sure and leave a comment below. Well, thanks so much. And if you want to see me make an entire quilt from start to finish, be sure to check out the video that pops up. It's Fran Morgan with Fabric Cafe. Happy quilting.